what's up everybody um y'all see me in this ridiculous max so if y'all see me in wearing this match this season or wearing a flash hat i thought i couldn't find my flash hat so yeah stuck with this which means the bucks are got a two game losing streak or more so yeah only one win on the road and then when the of course they didn't win on Friday and of course you see they didn't win today so um <laughs> yeah I believe in God so everything be fine so for those who just join in um I'm wearing this mask because uh the Bucks have got a two game losing streak so we're going to talk about that segment and Plus, like I said, we're going to talk about the results of Bound for Glory, Halloween Havoc, and a couple of, you know, box office numbers. Um, like, I believe in Jesus, but uh, I have no religion. So, just put it that way. Okay. So, if y'all want to, if y'all interested, like, in wrestling instead, you know, you don't want to hear, like, talk me talk about basketball, just, like, Jesus put it on pause or whatever for the next 10 minutes. So that's what we're going to start talking about. So the Milwaukee Bucks lost 115, 115 to 102. And yeah, although Brooklyn was not doing good at the three point percentage, but Brooklyn ended up making it um, win it count. <laughs> I just believe. I just believe. Not a follower. But yeah, you're gonna have people like you know chatting on live on YouTube, and of course this is a pre-recorded episode as well. And but I'm live here on YouTube and Twitch. That is hard to breathe in this mask. I, I don't know how my wife does it. But um, anyway. But yeah, um, seemed like it was okay in the first quarter, but it's like, they just couldn't stop the three. And you know, like, you have the third option, you know, finally stepping up, but again, he was shooting too many threes. Same thing, you know, with Damian Lillard, um, shot too many threes and it just wasn't good. So that kind of, you know, just sucks, so. Okay, while we talk about um Jesus, we are talking about wrestling, talking about Milwaukee Bucks, talking about you know box office stuff. So I'm just going to leave that alone. But um, anyways, we're going to get to like the quarter status because yeah, this game kind of got this game really got me upset. So <clears throat> let's get on to it. So, you got the Brooklyn win in the first quarter, 27 to 25. Second quarter, it was a low scoring quarter. Um, I think it was very low for both teams. You got Brooklyn 21 and Milwaukee 20. So, you no know, close game in the first half. Then, it was a lot of scoring in the second half. It was very close in the third quarter, 33 to 35. So, it was close to a point. But it was the fourth quarter. That's when, you know, the Bucks didn't um, do as much as they could. Um, a lot of turnovers and just letting Brooklyn just score the three. So, yeah, you too. Um, but, yeah, 32 to 24, Brooklyn was up um, that fourth quarter. So, mainly Brooklyn led the whole game. And what made it like a little bit interesting in the fourth quarter was actually, you know, the bench players. You know, some of them was like kind of scoring and suddenly they came up and yeah, they, 
you know, they, you know, the bench has started to score, especially, you know, like the young guys. So the young guys were just giving, like, the Brooklyn young guys problems. And, yeah, before you know it, it's all over. So they would have been beaten by 20, but at least, you know, some of the young guys end up making it close. So that's why you see 102 to 115. So we're going to look at the team status. We're going to start with the Bucks first. So uh, 33 of 74 with, I would say, 45% from the field. Um, kind of like a worse three-point shooting. Um, 10 of 33 with 30.3% from three. Not bad free throw shooting and not bad from Giannis either. Uh, we'll get to him in a bit. 26 of 31 with nearly 80, I would say 84% from, from the free throws. Sorry about that. Um, hello. Um, let's see. We got Bucks got seven offensive rebounds, thirty-six defensive rebounds, with a total of forty-three rebounds. And I believe Brooklyn probably will out rebound them, and especially in the offensive rebounds. So we'll get to Brooklyn in a second. Um. I think that's 20 assists, I believe. Yeah, 20 assists, 7 steals, only 3 blocks, and the 3 blocks ain't from Brook. So that part kind of sucks. Um, and yeah, this is probably going to be a season high right now in turnovers with 18. Just ridiculous. They need to learn how to take care of the ball. This is not pretty. So now we're going to get on to Brooklyn. Um, I think their field goal is not that better than um, Milwaukee when they still won. 39 to 91 with, by the way, 43% from the field. Um, three pointer ain't no better. Well, a little bit better than the Bucks were. 16 to 45 with 35.6%. Might as well say that's 36%. Mm, very good in free throw shooting, 21 to 23 with 91.3 percent from the free throw. A little bit better offensive rebounds than the Bucks with 12, with a total of 47 rebounds. So better than the Bucks. Um, 23 assists, nine steals, three blocks. So it wasn't that many, you know, that much, you know, blocking the ball or anything like that because. It seemed like they had a dominant center. Only thing they had was Nick Claxton, but he was like off the bench, which was kind of weird. And their turnovers, they have nothing but 12 turnovers. Um, now we're going to try to get to um, Okay. You can um, leave this channel if you want. Anyways, now we can get to the um, player status, so we're going to look at that. Um, well, you have your big three, you know, kind of stepped up a little bit, but normally not their normal numbers, so it's kind of weird. Giannis Adekumbo, uh, with well, led the team, I should say, 22 points, 4 turnovers, one block, one steal, seven assists, 12 rebounds, so double-double. One offensive rebounds, eight of 11 from the free throw, so not too bad. Seven to 11 from the field. Brook Lopez, um, oh wow, he really didn't do that bad on three point percentage, so kind of shocked. He had 15 points, uh, two steals, four rebounds, three of five from the three-point line and six and nine from the field. Damian Lillard, um, field goals not that good. Um, 21 points, four turnovers. Yeah, that's crazy with the turnovers. Four assists, four rebounds with one offensive rebounds, 10 and 11 from the free throw, one to seven from three and five to 13 from the field. That's not good. That is not good. Anyways, um, 
Gary Trent Jr., um, 9.2 uh, assists, 3 or 4 from the free throw, 2 or 6 from 3, and 2 or 8 from the field. So he really didn't find his footing in this team yet, which is not good either. And only person, you know, stepped up on the bench, um, you have Bobby Portis, 16 points, 1 block, 2 assists, 10 rebounds, so double-double. 1-1 from the free throw, 1-4 from 3, and 7-14 from the field. Yeah, somebody from the bench needs to step up. Right now, it's not Pat Connaughton. He didn't do that good. Um, A.J. Green didn't do that good. Um, even um, Doyle Wright, not that good either. So, kind of sucks, but he got, got a block, so I guess I can give him that. Let's see, um, I think that's Cam Johnson, I believe, um, for 13 points. Yeah, yeah, Cam Johnson, okay, yeah, 13 points, two steals, three assists, six rebounds, three of nine from three, and five of 12 from the field. Didn't have a good shooting night. Dennis Schroeder led the team, and I think he led the game with 29 points. Um... One steal, six assists, four rebounds, eight of eight from the free throw, five of eight from three. Yeah, they, they really had tough D on him, and he still made it. And eight of 15 from the field. Then you got Cam Thomas. Um, oh, okay, he led the team. I'm sorry. 32 points, two steals, two assists, five rebounds with one offensive rebounds, 10 to 11 from the free throw. Horrible 2 or 8 from 3 and 10 or 21 from the field. This is mainly like Brooklyn just hit the three pointers when it counted. Although, you know, they had a um, horrible three point shooting. Hey, what's up now, though? Um, let's see. Let's see. I think it's Noah Clownley, I believe that's what his name is. So. Sorry about this, guys. It's kind of like hard to see me here, but you know, when you got a team that's lose like two games or more, you have to put on something silly. So, yeah. Noah Carley with 13 points, four rebounds with one offensive rebounds, two or two from the free throw, three or eight from three, four or 13 from the field. And Nick Claxton from the bench, I still don't know why he's playing off the bench. Uh, 10 points, 2 blocks, 1 assist, 11 rebounds, so double-double for him. 5 offensive rebounds, and 5 or 6 from the field. And I think that Jair Williams, um, 7 points, 1 block, 1 steal, 4 rebounds, 2 offensive rebounds, 1 to 2 from 3, and 3 at 8 from the field. Hmm? Why are you wearing a uniform mask? Hazel will explain it to you, so ask her. Okay, um... Unicorn mask. Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't have to It's around. We just can't find it. So I just thought this was like the next big thing. And plus, you know, it's close to Halloween, so why not? Um... Yeah, final score, like I said, 115 to 102. Um, Bucks lost to Brooklyn. And their next game is tomorrow, and they go against Boston. So that's going to be another. That's going to be a really tough one. So I'm not sure if they're going to win that one either, but we'll see. Um, go to a recap. Um, they played Brooklyn four times this year. Um, next time they play Brooklyn. Um, will be December 8th, they'll be back in Brooklyn for that one. Then the day after Christmas, the Nets will play the Bucks in Milwaukee. So what an after Christmas game, so why not? And the day after New Year's Day, they play them again in Milwaukee. That'll be the final time that the Brooklyn plays against them. So 
before we move on we're going to look at the um, standings so let's look at that and sorry it's kind of like hard for me to like look into this but you know it's crazy <laughs> and I apologize if I did scare anyone by wearing this on on the start of this on video so I apologize Okay, now Cleveland and Boston are the only two teams that are undefeated. Then you got Orlando and Atlanta, only got one loss. Knicks and Heat, only one loss. Then you got Chicago, Toronto, Brooklyn, Milwaukee, Philly, Indiana, Charlotte, with, you know, one and two. Then you got Washington is 0-2 and, and Detroit 0-3. Let's see. Warriors, Thunder, and Lakers from the West are undefeated. Then you got Okay, Memphis, Phoenix, and Minnesota and New Orleans are 2-1. Let's see. Dallas, Clippers, and Spurs are 1-1. One Houston and Portland 1 and 2, then, sorry about that, everybody else you got, um, the Kings, Nuggets, and Jazz are 0 and 2, so, some of these big teams are starting pretty bad, including Milwaukee, so, you know that's kind of suck, so, if I can find what I'm looking for, so I'm about to take this off now, so I'm sorry if I frighten people, so, <sighs> oh my god. Yeah, it was hard to breathe. Okay, so. Don't have to wear that anymore, and San Francisco is beating the crap out of Dallas, so that's good news. So, um. No, that's it for talking about the Bucks. Now y'all can come back on and we'll talk about TNA Bound for Glory results. So we're going to talk about that. Um, but yeah, um, I saw a majority of this um, pay-per-view. Although, you know, there was a few matches that I really wanted to see, you know, to kind of like slow down. So yeah, that kind of sucks. Oh, excuse me. And I did see, you know, the... You know the countdown to Bound for Glory, the two matches there, and plus with the um the celebration of you know the Hall of Famers um which is the co-founder of TNA and um, Bob Ryder and also in the Hall of Fame is Rhino. So congratulations to them both. Um, let's talk about this um first match: uh, Ash and Heather by Elegance versus Sire Brookside and NXT's Brindley Reese. Um, I believe I was right about this one. Like I said, like I said, I wanted Brookside and Brittany Reese to win, but they didn't. So it ended up being Ash and Heather about Elegance winning the match. Um, let's see, the Call Your Shot Gauntlet. Um, I didn't think this was actually was going to happen, but yeah, they, there were some returns that was in here. Um, of course, you got Kazarian started at number one. Then you got some returns like Rohit Radu. Like he returned. He's ended up number five. Um, Sammy Callahan ended up being, you know, number eight. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think who was. Um, Trent Seven returned. So that's another return. Um, what else? Yeah, Rhino was in the um, Call Your Shotgun. Hell, why not? Probably would have had him in there. Um, let's see who else was made their return. Um, yeah, that was if like all who like made their return. Okay, the Rascals did. Like Terry, Terry McGill and Zachary Wentz, they did return. Um, ended up being the um, final four with... Um, I think was it um 
Let's see, I knew it was the final four. I know it was Kazarian, um, Rhino, um, J. Okay, JDC, and AJ Francis. So, yeah, if y'all y'all can probably can read it from here. So, Rhino eliminates JDC. Francis delivered his own gore to Rhino, but Rhino turns it around for elimination. And it will end up being the final two, which was Rhino and Kazarian. And with the low blow, and Frankie Kazarian throw Rhino out. And of course, who won the cardio shot? Was none other than Frankie Kazarian, which he is going to be um, the referee for the main event later. So I'll explain to y'all how that happened when we get to it in a bit. Um, X Division Championship match. Um, yeah, I was correct about this one too. Um, Mike Billy and Vingingo, although it seems like Vingingo did get injured during that, and Mike Billy, um, yeah, he retains after you know just winning it back, and it wouldn't make no sense to have him like lose it again and he won it back. So I don't know what Tina was doing. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, Rosemary and Wendy Chu versus Spitfire. Um, another good match, and you know, Spitfire did retain. And just I guess the bad thing that everybody you know saw that um, Rosemary kind of turned on Wendy Chu. So maybe that view is going to happen. So we'll see. If it does, then you know Wendy Chu got her own thing going on on in NXT on um, attacking. Um, Tatum Max, uh, Tatum Maxi. I hope I got the name right. But anyways, they're gonna have like a casket match for this Tuesday. If y'all saw Halloween Havoc, so we'll, you know, get to that. Um, let's see. Okay, and then Jax Alexander versus Steve Macklin. Um. I kind of, I wanted Steve Macklin to win, but I knew, like, I predicted that Josh Alexander was going to win, and he did. And like I said, um, you know, not much help, because Josh Alexander got her, got his team on there. Um, kind of sucks, um, so it's kind of, like, correct on that one. And the Monsters Ball match, which... I missed most of this match, and it's kind of sucked because, you know, the feed I was watching was, you know, starting to mess up. So, both the Digital Media Championship and International Wrestling Championship were on the line in the Monsters Ball. So, just some of what I saw was, like, really brutal, which was, it needed to be. And PCO did retain both his titles. Um, but, yeah, just kind of crazy. Um... Moose and Mike Santana, um, no, they went one on one. Um, I don't think the, yeah, I don't think the, um, oh, only JDC only was only one that interfered. Um, the rest of them, you know, they was gonna prepare for their match that they had later on. Um, I'm oh, sorry, but that match was the main event, but sorry about that. Um, as I predicted, my Santana did win, did beat Moose. Um, one of the triple main events that was going on here, um, the Knockouts World Championship, Golden Grace, Jordan Grace, sorry, defending against Masa Slamovich, and what a match. That was one of the good match, and I did predict it right that Masa Slamovich did um, beat Jordan Grace, and now the new Knockouts World Champion. Um, probably a little bit sporter, but that's the only title. No, no. That's one of the two titles that changed hands. So the second main event, you got Nick Mamet versus Joe Hendry with um, Frankie Kazarian as the special guest referee. Um, Parts of this match I missed and seemed like it was doing good. And you saw that um, Joe Hendry did like an Eminem tribute when he was like walking in and the crowd, I was shockingly seeing the crowd, you know, turn on Nick Namath saying, you know, F Ohio. I'm like, what? That's crazy. I don't know. And you know how some fans are. So, um, so 
as you can see, like Kazaria did try to cash in on his um cardio shotgun list. Uh, John Layfield came in. Um, call him just. I'm just gonna say JBL. It'd be more easier. Stops. Um, of course, stops Kazarian and gave him a close line from hell. Um, I guess Henry was trying to. You know, it seemed like he was trying to talk to JBL. Close line to hell him too. So we just wanted like, what? What's going on? Then Ryan Nemeth, of course, Nick Nemeth's brother, um, try to confront JBL. They end up, you know, hitting him. So that's kind of shock. Um, you know, referee came out and well, Nemeth did counter the stand ovation into a super kit, then followed by the danger zone to retain the world title. So I was kind of wrong with this match. I thought, you know, Joe Henry was going to win it, then um, Kazarian was going to cash it in. So. That kind of like went out of the way, so Nick Nemeth did retain. So they kind of suffered this momentum for like Joe Hendry. So you're thinking like, what's this gonna do for um, Joe Hendry? Now he didn't win the um, world title, so we don't know what's gonna happen. And it's just, I don't know. Everybody gonna turn on him because he didn't win it, or wherever the case may be, we don't know. But it's. I don't know. I just think TNA kind of went off the left field with this one. They should have just gave it to Joe Hendry and have him, um, they had Kanzaria cash it in. So, yeah, this kind of sucks. So, um, the next main pay-per-view would be the one that's going to be beginning of the year on Sunday, January 19th. It will be a TNA Genesis. So, um, it would be in Garland, Texas. I think that's like close to Dallas, I believe. I could be wrong. So, that's that. Um, then, you know, they're talking about um, Turning Point, which will be in... On, I know it's on a Friday, but I think it's like um, a week like a week before Black Friday, I believe. That's what it's going to be. Okay, main event of Full Metal Mayhem for the TNA World Tag Team Championships. Match of the night. And and I'm kind of glad they did put this one as the main event because that was night match of the night. So there was majority of these matches could have been like in the, they are in the category of a match of the night, but the Full Metal and Mayhem match of the night for me. So that's why I picked. Um, but shockingly, um, the Hardys did are the new TNA World Tag Champions defeat the system and ABC. Um, an injury report they said um, Chris Bay ended up getting hurt during the match, and yeah, so we don't know like how serious it is, and I guess we'll find out sometime this week. So yeah, good main event. Um, Good pay-per-view. Um, what I'm going to rate it is, like, I already picked my match of the night, so that's the Full Metal Mayhem. But um, for grading it, um, because I'm, like, majority missed, like, a match because, you know, the feed I was watching was messed up, I'm going to give this pay-per-view an A-. minus. So... A minus because you know I didn't see the um you know it was one match I didn't see most of it but and I'm gonna well A minus then I'm gonna also give it a nine two so nine out of ten um A minus so very good pay per view can't complain um just was I was saw like the one um match which was the X division. So it was kind of, you know, back and forth with that. So, yeah, it kind of sucks. So, next up, we're going to talk about the results of uh, Halloween Havoc. Which y'all probably did see, like, when it probably just kind of ended, like, over half an hour ago. So, um, let's get on to the five matches. Um, let's see, um, Tony Angelo defending the North American Championship against Oba Femi. In the tables, ladders, and scares match. Um, yeah. 
kind of happened where I predicted that I knew the family was going to get involved and, you know, all about family end up dominating that. Then, you know, they, you know, the family ended up getting the upper hand, you know, start attacking all about family and it ended up getting too much for them. And Tony D'Angelo ended up winning, um, retaining the title, which I predicted. And it was pretty good that he did too. So I'm glad he did retain. Because I didn't want him to just win it. Then, the, you know, a month later, he lose it. So I'm glad that didn't happen. Um... Tag team match. Um, you got Stephanie Vancouver and Julia um, go against Rocky and Perez, the women's NXT Women's Champion, and Cora J. So it was not bad of a match. Um, got some interesting things like happening, and lo and behold, you have Julia and Stephanie Vancouver end up winning the match. So, congratulations to them. Um, Zaria did appear after the match, but she was like, you know, up on the, like the Raptors, not like the Raptors, but by like by the suites. So, she was um, there just looking down at them. So, you know, another challenger for Roxanne if, you know, if they go that route. So, we don't know where they're going to go. Uh, I hate when that happens. But, um, anyways, uh, I think this was, yeah, two of the matches I was wrong about, and this is one of them. Rich Holland versus Andre Chase in the ambulance match. It's just the treatment they give Andre Chase. It's like he always, like, losing match after match. Like, seriously. I thought it was good, fast pace, and Rich Holland didn't injure anybody. So, for people that's going to say, he injured people. So, yeah, but Rich Holland did end up winning the match, end up putting, um... Andre Chase into the ambulance and shockingly I didn't see none of Chase U like interfering in this so didn't see the return of Duke Huxton or didn't see Riley Osborne you know helping him out so yeah it was kind of weird so this just been a straight up or one on one match so I'm just kind of shocked so um this match I did get confused and I was also wrong about this match um Kalani Jordan defended her North American Championship against all three is all three members of in, um what was it Victor Influence? I keep on getting the name wrong. I can't believe it, but we'll just say all three women: Jasmine Mix, Fallen Hendry, and J.C. Jane. So Jasmine Mix was out first. So I, I thought they was gonna pick one of them to face, but yeah, all three of them ended up facing her. So. With Jasmine Mix, um, Kelly and Jordy pinned her first, then JC Jane, she pinned her, then Fallen Henry was last, then, you know, a lot of interference from Fatal, Fatal Influence was just like too much, and of course JC Jane and, like I said, Jasmine Mix interfere, and Henley got her one and did a signing wizard and pinned Kalani Jordan for the win. So, do North American champion, Fallon Henley. So, kind of good for her, but I was thinking that, you know, at least um, JC Jane should have been the one to win it. Because, you know, we would think we would see her with a solo title instead of, you know, being a tag champ. But, um, yeah, that's just me. And the main event in the Devil's Playground match for the NXT Championship was Trick Williams versus Ethan Page. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff happened in this match too, and it was just like crazy. So, um, of course, Trick Williams did retain the title, which, you know, good for him, and it was just crazy. So, you know, like I said, Trick Williams did retain, and Rich Holland out of nowhere ended up beating up Trick Williams. First, um, Paige wasn't like he didn't like that at first, but he was just like didn't do something. So ended up, you know, beating up Williams and they both were. Then Bubba Ray Dudley out of nowhere, you know, and uh with the assist and helping on Trick Williams. So we don't know where this gonna lead off. Well we yeah, Bubba Ray Dudley was ringing like his busted radio, busted open radio. And I forgot the 
Dave guy that was um with him too, so I apologize if I didn't get his last name. But yeah, um it was kinda interesting like having like Bubba Ray Dudley in there, so and of course you know him and Devon did sign like a legends contract with WWE. So who knows what they're gonna be up to or the upcoming weeks, especially with NXT, but then again it could lead to when they gonna be in Philadelphia at the old ECW arena on Wednesday. Not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. So yeah, this is really interesting and see what's gonna happen with this. Um Well Grading it and rating it. So this is gonna be strange for me to rate this because it's like like conflicted between like a certain grading it. Um I will give it an A minus as well. It just like there's just you know it was just a few things that happened during this um PLE event that just didn't seem right and like I get it but it just didn't seem right to me so that's why I give it an A minus and for the rating of it um I'm gonna give this one a nine as well. Like I said, those few reasons and yeah I say why. So, probably going to be nothing interesting to talk about, you know, wrestling news and stuff like that. Oh, touchdown Dallas. They still going to, they still going to lose. Um, well, everybody know about the Samantha Irvin news that, um, the reason she left WWE because she didn't like uh, ring announcing. She wanted to be, you know, like a manager or GM or something like that. But, um. I guess, according to her, she said WWE has no plans for her but to just stay as a ring announcer. Which I think she did pretty good. And it's like, I think she's going to realize later on that she's going to miss it and be like, I, maybe I should have never, you know, gave it up. So, it's like one of the things. You ain't going to know what you got till it's gone. So, it'll give her some time. So, we'll see. Um, Let's see. Um, oh yeah, and after, you know, the, um, you know, the Fatal Influence end up, like, winning it, so, of course, Zaria ended up attacking all three of the members of Fatal Influence, and just ended up beating them, and, yeah, so, maybe she's on the press to go against the North American title, which it seems like, you know, because it seems like the women's title is like really occupied so you know you're gonna have um Kalani Jordan gonna go after her rematch and stuff like that so that's probably gonna happen soon and you got Zaria that's gonna like go after it so I'm gonna how long they're gonna stall it until they actually you know she actually have a match so we'll see um let's see um I um, feel sorry for um, Ric Flair's stepson. Um, he ended up killing himself by suicide yesterday. So, yeah, that's... Uh, he's a musician, Sebastian Killer. So, um, recipes to him. And uh, my condolences to, like, Ric Flair and his wife and the rest of the family. So, yeah. That's the thing, like, suicide is, like, a real problem. It's, like, especially with people that, you know, that's like me that had, like, mental illness. And it ain't cool. It's just, like, of course, you've done a lot of things in life and stuff. And, like, sometimes your head and your heart is, like, still empty. It's, like, um, you've done everything, but what's left to do in this world? That's how some people feel. And it's just like, you know, what just ain't it all. That's how some people are, but, um, you know, October 10th was Mental Health Awareness Day. Um, you got, um, you know, domestic violence that was on yesterday. We were at an um, event for that. And, um, yeah, it's just a lot, you know, a lot to take in with, you know, with your mental health and, like, can be leading, like, up to suicide. And it's like, what more can you do um, 
But at least we can try to do something. But the only thing I can tell y'all for, you know, if you can prevent a friend from doing, um, like, or about to commit suicide, the thing I can tell y'all is be there for them. And although it may be they say there's nothing wrong, if you notice in your instinct that something's wrong, then something is wrong. No matter how they, what they say and how they um, present themselves. Always check on your friends. No matter um what's going on with them, just always check on them. And hopefully, you know, we do all that more um we will prevent um suicides from happening. So Yeah, um Let's see, don't care about the well, let's just look at this. AEW finds three new trademarks. Maybe related to, like, you know, maybe upcoming pay-per-views that they're going to do for next year. So, let's see. Oh, of course, Shockwave. Of course, that's... And the three additional trademarks is... AEW Max Month, AEW WrestleMax, and WrestleMax. So, maybe WrestleMass would be like a new um, pay-per-view. Because I know they still got a... Um, because they still got January and February with um, no pay-per-views. So, maybe, you know, their pay-per-views ain't up on the start in March. So, you know, kind of sucks. So, you know, hopefully, you know, they get their ducks in a row and go from there. So, we will see. Um, let's see if there's anything. Um, oh, excuse me. And I think I mentioned this earlier. I may have mentioned it on another video today, but in case I didn't, I'm gonna mention it now. Uh, both Ethan Page and Trick Williams did like a video diss track. It's it's crazy. It's <laughs> I don't even know what to say off of that, but yeah. Um, let's see. Of course, we got new WWE Tag Team Champions, and that's the Moral City Machine Guns, thanks to Roman Reigns, Jay Uso, and Jimmy Uso. So, that happened this past Friday on SmackDown. Um, Will Nightingale pull from CML MLL match after suffering a concussion? That's kind of sucks. Um, Let's see. I'm not just seeing if there's anything else that we need to talk about before we move on to another subject. So, I think there's really. Um. And going to talk about collision. So. I did watch Collision yesterday while I was watching um, TNA Bound for Glory. And of course, like I said, we already talked about um, the reason why Samantha Irvin did leave um, WWE. Like, it's she can focus on her um, singing career. That's mainly what's going to happen. Um, Wait, a major match involving the bloodline was confirmed for WWE Crown 2 at the tapings for next week's SmackDown. Let's see. Oh, yeah, because they did um, record this Friday SmackDown. What they, cause the, they did both shows in Brooklyn because, you know, the trip they're going to make for um, Saudi Arabia for um, Crown Jewel. So, that makes sense. No, you know what? I'm not even going to look at it. I'll just, I'd rather just be surprised. So, it may end up being, you know, as we're probably guessing, it probably will end up being a six-man tag for, um, you know, Bloodline 1.0 versus Bloodline 2.0. So, that's probably what it's going to be. So, shouldn't have read that, but um, one thing we know, we're just going to see how. Um... But I think 
Yeah, that's probably what we're just going to um, end it. Well, end talk about wrestling from there. So let's end that talk and let's talk about a little bit um, comic book movies and TV news. Um, let's talk about that. Um, anyways, uh, like I mentioned um, on the past videos that, you know, Joker 2, of course, um, it did hit a milestone for his final weekend on um at, at theaters which is going to be kind of um strange because it didn't really um do as good as everybody hoped but it did pass its um the amount of money that it did for production and it passed that amount so as you can see that is it gross it crossed it like 200 million globally after four weeks and you know starting this Tuesday it will be on um, digital and rumor has it that in mid-December the DVD and the blu-ray is going to be released so yeah when the Warner Brothers release had its theater count slash from 4,102 theaters to two 2857 so it, let's see with Joker 2 becoming available on digital this Tuesday of course it remains on just 1.1243 1, screens after 24 days of its release its 37.6 million over a weekend was lower than superhero flops like more like Morbius um, the Marvels and the Flash. The film suffered the worst drop ever for a comic book movie when it plunged 81% in the second week in October 11th. Well, just, and to compare to other R rated comic book movies of the year, Marvel Studios Deadpool and Wolverine, of course, earned 211, let's see, yeah, 211.4 million domestically in this opening weekend. Surpassing Joker 2's lifetime um, total gross in just three days. So yeah, um, let's see another underperforming. Okay, they talk about Venom: The Last Dance. So they claim that um, although all the Sunday's numbers ain't in yet, so they thinking this is going to estimate um, in the United States is going to be 51 million. So that's a that's a low opening below um, Black Adam was disappointing when the DC movie opened with 67 million over the same weekend in 2022. So, yeah, like I said, with the budget of Joker 2, um, for the dos, um, of course, the budget of 190 million, and of course, they, you know, passed the budget that they made, but, you know, still from, you know, promoting it and, you know commercials and stuff like that yeah it's crazy um okay yeah there it is um 4k uhd blu-ray and dvd on december 17th week 17th so yeah um that's crazy um let's um now we can look at um see they had saturday's number for venom 2 so Let's see, I know there's two things they was talking about. So, although they talking about it this morning, um, let's look at um, let's look at Saturday's numbers. So we're gonna look at this article first, then we're gonna look at the other one. Um, let's see, Derek. Okay, we didn't talk about that. Um. Let's see, Venom the Last Dance saw the franchise lowers the main open it with 51 million after 22 million on Friday in previews. And wow, 16.8 million on Saturday, which was yesterday. Yeah. All this went down during the first World Series matchup in 43 years in between Dodgers and Yankees. Hey, because of that, nobody want to see, well, like I said, I don't like I don't like the Yankees at all, but 
I'd rather have the Dodgers win the whole thing than um, the Yankees. But that's just me. Um, but yeah, and they thinking. Okay, the third one um, they graded it a B. And y'all, if y'all want to see like my video earlier today, talk about my review on Venom: The Last Dance. Um, go ahead and check that out. Um, it's right on YouTube, and also you can look at um, Artrell J's um, my TikTok page. That review is on there, and I, like I said, Tuesday we will get the wife's review on the movie as well, because she's gonna see it with me. So we'll just see her point of view on Tuesday. So. So we got that number, and let's see what other um thing they're talking about. Well, from what they're saying, it may gonna be um on this opening um weekend it may worldwide. This they thinking they're gonna predict that it's gonna hit 175 million globally, opening with a monster assist from overseas international box office. So, and we don't even have Sunday's numbers up yet. So, sometime tomorrow I will like talk about that and you know and post a video up about it. So you get a chance, you know, see it yourself. So, so refresh from the latest. Sully Venom: The Last Dance had come up with a hundred seventy-five million global opening, which is slightly lower than what we saw yesterday, but still well ahead of a pre-weekend projections while domestic misdef landed at 51 million overseas overpower at 124 million from 64 markets and led a par led by a powerful china debut the franchise has now reached 1.5 billion worldwide what they mean like all three of the um venom movies well i thought the first one made a billion it's kind of weird I swore I thought the first one did made a billion worldwide. I don't know. Let me write this down. Um, www.wick. Wick. Okay, yeah, I had to look at something before, you know, we, um... In the show, because I believe that the first Venom made like a billion worldwide. So let's go with not now. Let's see a Venom movie. Okay, let's see what the first one made. Oh, it was close to a billion. Okay. So the budget was 100 to 116 million with the box office numbers worldwide was 856.1 million. So, of course it made a lot more than um Of course it like made a lot more than everybody expected so let's see um where is it there you go venom let them be conscious um i know it may a little bit less but um let's see the budget was 110 million, but it made it did make more um, worldwide. So, and 506 point nine million. So, it was already like over a billion for like both of those um movies combined. Okay, and let's look, let's look at um. They probably didn't gonna. They probably ain't gonna say the official number. And I wish they stopped sending that for people. 
okay budget okay this one was a little bit higher like 120 million and right now they're saying the box office worldwide it made like 175 million of course it already made um the amount that it was budget in so but then again like i said we're still gonna wait on sunday's number we ain't gonna jump to conclusions because you know they probably just you know just had the like last showing of of it and you know probably people will buy it like the last minute it's kind of same thing that happened while i was at the theaters today like i was just only expecting me and somebody else bought it but it was like it was like six more people that you know got their tickets like the last minute so crazy things that happen you never know but yeah like it already made uh what um like i already made his budget and just got to see if it can at least like double that so if they can double that that would be about 240 million so they halfway there so let's see if they can do it because you never know they might do it next week um but yeah like i said just mainly just saying that um yeah, they even jumps in conclusions before, you know, it's up there, um. Yeah. So, right now, it's like over, you know, there's over a billion. But then again, you got, like, more um, weeks to go, so you never know who's going to, um, make more. Um. You know, we'll see. Um. Let's see, Venom Legend has jumped on 50.8 million from 64 overseas markets through Friday, as noted yesterday, see below. Despite the domestic underperformance of full global weekend, uh, look to come in at 180 million, which will bring the French out of total to 1.5 billion. Okay, um, like we said, um, tomorrow we'll probably we'll talk about, you know, today's <laughs> but we will talk about uh these numbers uh sunday's numbers and the total combined so they already predicted that it's 175 million in the U worldwide and only made like 50 million in the united states uh, you never know but we'll see um if y'all guys like content like this um Please, you know, like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Either you're watching the pre-recorded episode or you're watching the live. Um, thank you guys that's watching on Twitch. Um, appreciate the support. Um, there'll be more live videos to come, so stay tuned for that. And I will try to inform everybody when the next time we'll be on live for um, Twitch. So probably the next time we're probably going to be live will be tomorrow. i um, talking about the Bucks and Celtics game. Which right now is not looking that good. That you know this, they buck my loot to stop this. Although I hate saying that, but it's just right now it's not looking good. So go for that. And after you guys on YouTube, um, thanks for the likes on here. Um, but please subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get up to 500 by the end of the year. So hopefully we will get there. So yeah, praying on it. Um, let's see, um, like I said, over 21,000 videos here on YouTube, so get to check them out, um, you know, like I said, there's gonna be some videos up tomorrow and some Tuesday and, and of course, you have, um, other shows like you got WFSO Top 10 that's gonna be on tomorrow, then you got... WFSO at the dark that's gonna be on Wednesday live. Then you have I think I know Friday we're gonna talk about on um, Crown Jewel, like their prediction on that because that's coming up. And um Thursday of course you got um Resclusive. So you get a chance, like check those past episodes and wait for those you know new episodes to come up this week. Um thank our sponsor toy dimension so you're interested in comic books and 
Oh, they didn't call anything. That sucks. So, anyways, you're interested in comic books, um, collectibles, like, you know, from comic books as well. Um, also, Fungo Pops and big collections, you know, like Star Wars or or WWE figures as well. They do have those. So, get a chance, you know, check it out. They do have a Facebook page. And, um... If you're in Milwaukee area, you can check them out at 5925 West North Avenue. Um, they're open f from Monday through Saturday, starting at 4 o'clock, 4 p.m., I should say. So, anyways, also check out the website, please. Um, I appreciate y'all, like, checking out the websites and stuff so far, and I appreciate it. So, keep continuing that. Um, website is wrestlingfanspeakout.weebly.com. Um, check out for like upcoming events and also check out you know photos that we take and a lot of like other news like buck stuff and all that good stuff so once again thank you guys for watching um thanks for the likes um until the next video you guys have a good one and please follow me on twitch if you're on there so see you later y'all have a good one would you be okay with something like that?